Hey everybody, welcome to the show. This week we are taking you to International Drive to check out some skeletons. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, you're watching The Trip. This is The Trip, episode 29, for the week of September 2nd, 2015. The Trip is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation, whether it be theme parks on the West Coast, East Coast, or on the seas. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, this is The Trip, a little show about something we all love called vacation. I'm Jenny Lynn. Hey, and I'm Teresa. <laughs> Dustin, you over there? I, I'm here. Yeah, thanks. It's our producer. I'm Big here. Big introduction there, huh? Yeah, hey. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. All right, well, this week, as we mentioned three seconds ago, we're going to International Drive because we visited a newly opened exhibit there called Skeletons, Animals Unveiled. Yeah, and I just want to throw out a, a very quick disclaimer for anybody listening this really isn't that bad at all, but we are going to be talking about actual animal and actual human bones. And if that is graphic to you at all, just keep that in mind moving forward, listening to the show. That is what we're going to be talking about. So, Seriously? Yeah, you I felt just, it needed a disclaimer? I, I did. I did. Just I didn't want to catch anybody off guard with that. When I start talking about flesh, and I got an <laughs> issue first, though. Okay. One moment, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another What's week. Up? Another week. Okay, what the heck? What did we say last week on <laughs> on fleek? And the world has gone insane. <laughs> the world is on fire. Let's just make up a word this week. Oh, you know what I did? I did some research on new slang words. Are you ready for this? The new word of the week. New slang terms that we should start using immediately, according okay. to BuzzFeed. Give me one. Number one is think piece. Oh, I've been saying that forever. What does that even mean? I don't know. It think doesn't piece. give. I don't know why. It is that like give an something you think about? It's a think piece. Or do you? Are you thinking about world peace? Hmm. It's not pulling up everything. I think something's wrong it's with just the random. Okay. With the um. With Let's the use the word badoobal. Wait. <laughs> that, you just made that up. I did. <laughs> Wait, what is this? Why do they say number Her two? Her brows are so badoobal. Number two is shark week. Is that a slang term? Uh, I That's think a... that just references shark week yeah. on the Discovery the Channel. Heck? BuzzFeed number three is wishbone. Wishbone, a one. wonderful animated. What Was that animated? That no, was, it was no, about was a, a talking puppy. dog. Yeah. yeah, he told good stories. Yeah. It's on PBS. But... Slang. Wait, is it there might be something bad. Term? Move on. I okay. don't know what that means. Well, if you don't know the re the Okay, this gets interesting. Number four, nip cheese. Uh, wait, did you? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I don't know. You Let, should be saying who, these. Uh, I don't know. I have a feeling we should be doing this. Oh, okay. Guys, look, it's not pulling up the definition part of it. It's just giving me the word. All right. <laughs> Can you pronounce that in a sentence? <laughs> I can't use yeah, nip but, cheese in okay, a sentence maybe, because I don't okay, know what it means. Sh, sh, maybe it's because we don't know what it means. We shouldn't be saying it. It's Should like I, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna <laughs> default and say that's a French word. Nichise. You did that with, on on, on fleek. On fleek. Too. Okay. So. Oh yeah. All right. I won't say any more of these because I don't. Because actually, we don't know what they mean. You know. Well, let's have someone send us in a slang <laughs> word, right? <laughs> yeah. That's tasteful and we know the meaning of. Right. It's not. Well, they have to tell nichise. us what the meaning is. Yeah, I don't know what is it in a sentence. But you know what? I have an issue. I had okay, this week has issue? started off so rough with me falling. The first thing I did Monday morning was take a dive in the neighbor's driveway. In the neighbor's driveway? Yes. See, I have to Why cross. Why were you in the neighbor's driveway? Well, because I live at the end of a cul-de-sac okay. and I have to walk up the street a little bit to get to my mailbox. And I was crossing. I was taking a shortcut just off the very tip of the end of their driveway. And I'd already picked up my mail, and I unfortunately was looking at my mail and not paying attention. And for whatever reason, my ankle decided, I will no longer support you. And I went down. 
And it was right before school. And the whole time I'm going down, I mean, it was like slow motion because it always is. I'm using the F word <laughs> 500 times as I go down <clears throat> and land on my back, flat on the driveway. And I immediately set up. And, and by F word, you mean frugal frock. Yes, frugal frock repeatedly. <laughs> frugal frock, frugal frock. And I look up and there's a little boy getting in his car across the street staring at me like he had never heard that word before. <laughs> <laughs> School starts. <laughs> so... It's a different kind of education. It is. And then I, okay, so I made it through my day at work, and I get home when the power's out. Oh, we had gone out to eat yes. that night. Yeah. And then, so I get home, and there's no power. Grace is in her room with every candle and flashlight, and Stella's sitting in complete and total darkness <laughs> in her room. <laughs> it's like, you can't share. She's, She's embracing to, it. Right? <laughs> She's embracing the darkness. <laughs> she was, She opened her door, and was like, you have no light in there? No. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> And Grace has got her room lit like a seance. You know? <laughs> Fake candles, real candles. It's like, you know. She's late. Right. She's like bringing somebody back from the dead. And Stella's in there burying a body. I don't Stella know what was born in the shadows. <laughs> so it was a rough start to the week. Well, we're Nothing about. Nothing was on fleet. Yeah, you know, we're on hump day here. How are you? Have you made it over the I'm, hump? I'm mobile now, so I'm hoping that it's got to go all go up, right? Yeah. Go down. Right. You've already been down. There's only I've already can, been down, <laughs> crawling my way go back home. Up from here. <laughs> I'm just gonna get. What is the movie where they're right around in um, the people no longer can walk, and they're all in like Wally. Wally. Yes, that is. I'm my. People are getting there quicker than the rest of the people's you, people. You need a hover lazy boy? I, know, I need a hover lazy boy <laughs> because I've lost the ability. So I'm thinking that would be pretty cool. Okay. All right. With things to consider, Christmas coming up. Yes, get me <laughs> a hover lazy boy. Dustin, we're going to have to look into that. Mm-hmm. It can be done. Dustin, have you had a good week? Yeah, I've had an okay week. Yeah? Yeah. You look a little more clean shaven than normal. Oh, I did. I did trim up a little bit. Thank you for noticing. It's nice, all happy. But otherwise, face. everything's yeah, yeah. Been I like the lighter beard. Thank you. If that plays into your decision at all, <laughs> not really. I know it doesn't. She likes the scruff. I do. I like the little. Thanks. You know. It's a good look. It's a good look. All not right. too clean, but not too, you know, manimal either. So talking about clean and manimals. How oh, about yeah. we talk about some animals? Yeah. With a little trip talk. <laughs> Did you like that segue? Yeah. <laughs> That was smooth. It was. Until I drew attention to it and made it awkward. Okay. (laughs) All right. As I mentioned before, we went to International Drive this past week. Again. Because there are so many things to do there. We can just keep going back and back. And and they keep opening new things. I know. That's what's freaking me out. This this one was uh, pretty new. It's an exhibit in the iDrive 360 complex. So right there next to the Orlando Eye, Madame Mm -hmm. Tussauds. Um, sea Life Aquarium. We we stumbled upon this actually when we went to go see those other attractions. Right, it had just opened up at that point, mm-hmm. and it looked just like a gift shop when we first. Did. Uh, you think, oh look, it's a little gift shop about bones and dead animals, with weird jewelry and it was just <laughs> weird, wasn't it? It was a little odd. But we found out in behind the gift shop was the exhibit. skeletons yep. exhibit called Skeletons Animals Unveiled Mm -hmm. and in case you couldn't figure out what the exhibit is about it's about animal skeletons and there's quite a few of them over 400 in fact and it's owned by a family right it's privately owned it is it is okay so what we found out was there's only two skeleton museums in all of America both of them owned by this family in fact and what did the guy tell us The, the owner found a little dead body and instead of his father saying, ooh, throw it down, they took it home, right? Okay, that sounds a little more dramatic than it actually was. <laughs> the story, uh, first of all, I think the guy's name is Jay Villa. Wow, yeah. I cannot say this. Villa Memaret. Villa Memaret. Yeah. Oh, here it is. At the age of, you wrote this out. I did because oh I'm prepared. At the age of seven, found a dog skull in the woods. He began Not collecting. a body. No, it wasn't a whole body. <laughs> He began collecting skulls, entering his skull collection in the fifth grade science fair and won. Is that what Stella was doing in the darkness? Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Oh, my God. Got married in 1985, so he found someone that... Okay. In 1986, (laughs) he... Oh, oh, his wife's still alive. 
He and his wife started a business called Skulls Unlimited International. Yeah. Wow. Over 25 years, Jay's passion became sh- sharing his skulls. In 2010, the first skeleton museum opened in Oklahoma City. The second branch opened in Orlando on April 29, 2015. Yeah, those are the cliff notes. Interesting. Yeah, the dude and his dad went into the woods, found a dog skull, and the dad said, Hey, son, let's take this dog skull back home, clean it up, and we'll keep it. Do you All have right, skulls Paul. in your house? That was the beginning of it. <laughs> do you all have skulls in your house at anywhere? No. Do you? Huh? We do not have what? animal Okay, we do. This we is do bizarre. We do not have animal parts in our house. Huh? You don't have any skulls? Huh? Oh, Dustin. <laughs> Why would he you doesn't have, have s- any? He doesn't have any huh? ribbons either. <laughs> <laughs> not real ones I'm anyway. Sorry. No, we have skulls. We have three or four in our garage. A of, real skulls? Yes. Of what? Deer with the antlers still attached. That we have found in the woods in Georgia. Um, Grace has got a little mouse skull in her room. And she wears what? it as a what? finger puppet. She does. She are, these it. are things that you have found? Yes. So maybe... You, um, so you're just, should, you're, you need to become part of the skeletons crew. Because you're right up there with Jay. Them. We just bring them in the way they are. and Well, they're clean. They're old. Okay, go on. Move on. <laughs> Huh? I'm telling too much about <laughs> stop. I'm exposing too much about my life, maybe. Well, apparently you're in good company because this guy did it as well and then made it a thing. So yeah, uh, from age seven on, winning science fairs with his skulls, getting married to a wife that thinks that skulls are great. They started a business and then decided to open a museum. And That's pretty cool. Lived happily ever after with their skulls. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so and they what we also found out is this family and the crew that they have assembled as their employees, they are the ones that clean and articulate each and every single one of these skeletons. So it's not like they're outsourcing. They all do this themselves. And it takes months to do each single one. And where do they get these skulls? Do you have that written down? I do not have that written down, but I think that they did. Do you remember where they mentioned that? Well, they, they get they them from all over the place. They said that they get them from uh, zoological uh, societies. They, they game hunting. I believe they get them from humane societies. Right. Um, none of the skeletons or skulls that are in the museum were actively killed to be a part of this no uh, that's exhibit. good to know when you get to yeah. some of those right. I'm glad, well, right. all of them but these are all animals that have died of natural, natural cause. causes yeah. or there are some reproductions in there a few yes they have a few reproductions and creations uh, yeah yep. okay that yeah, was i guess the, we'll get to that that was the scary one <laughs> So, and I guess before we get into the whole thing, the logistics of the place are uh, they're open every single day, including holidays from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. The price for the exhibit is $19.99 for adults, $12.99 for children, 3 to 11. Teachers are free, by the way. You have to bring your teacher credentials, but if you are a teacher, you are able to get in at no cost. Wow. Mm-hmm. They're very big on education is what yeah. I found out. So they offer group rates, which are 20% off for groups of 10 or more. They can also accommodate buyouts where you can have a catered event and, you know, even get gift bags and everything and have your lock-ins. your event there. Yeah, this was the one that got me. They host lock-ins. That's what I did with like my church youth group. I don't think we would have done this here. Yeah, yeah. you would. Be I did them in a roller ring. Yeah, I used to do them with my church youth group as well, but not in a skeleton. Well, I had a lock in at SeaWorld with Stella one time for Halloween, which was yeah. pretty awesome. You this got the s- skeletons. I don't, know. I don't think yeah. I would do a lock in with a skeleton. It's like Night at the Museum for well, me. Well, yeah, I'd be a little bit freaked out, but apparently some people do that, and Starting rate at starts 2, at two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars, right? The one thing that I thought was really cool about this place was they have an education and outreach program. And there's a few things that um, you can do, like where they will go out to schools or mm-hmm. organizations and do um, presentations for your group. Skeletons so you got the road. Huh? You have your 4-H club or, you know, your Boy Scouts or whatever. Right. And you can pick the program that you want that presented. So they might do a whole program on being able to tell the difference between um, – teeth for different kinds of animals and teaching kids how to distinguish is this an herbivore is this a carnivore same with um oh i know the answer to this the pointy sharpie ones that's a carnivore the flat gnawy ones what 
did you do this morning? You just right. saved everyone money for this. Yeah, I know the difference. Outreach. The pointy sharpie ones. <laughs> the pointy sharpie ones. <laughs> the ones that tear the flesh <laughs> versus the grinding teeth <laughs> of the the, the gritty gritty teeth. Um, they also do it with like uh, feet bones and different hip bones, different parts of the body, so that you to? can. <laughs> I sent that one over there for you. I know. Are we all going to start singing the song now? Um, Anyway, and they have the the programs divided up by ages, so they can accommodate a group of preschoolers. With simple questions all the way up to... All the way up to seniors Somebody wanting to know where I can get the bugs to take the flesh off skeletons I might have. Mm. Oh, yeah. We'll be talking about that. (laughs) Well, the other thing is that you can do field trips there, and when you do field trips with your class or whatever, they have activities for... Um, the That's group cool. to do, which I think is, yeah, actually it's cool. Interesting. One of the things yeah. that they had is a scavenger hunt within the exhibit. Oh, we had to find a certain animal? I Maybe. I guess so. They just, just said scavenger hunt. And the last thing that they have um, for teachers, there are download free downloadable guides. So if the teachers are bringing their kids in and there's not some kind of leader, you know, giving a tour, um, teachers can have guides with them where they can lead their own you know, tour around the exhibit and help them all to be better informed so kids aren't just standing there not really knowing what they're looking at. Right, cool. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's talk about our experience. Our experience. Well, we walked in the door. (laughs) Yes, um, we weren't supposed to. This was an offhand (coughs) thing we did because of the weather. Right. We were were supposed to go golfing, mini golfing, as you all know if you were listening last week, but the weather... But you know what? Couldn't this is it. what's good about I drive. If you are planning to do something, and here mm-hmm. comes the rain in Florida, heaven forbid it does rain in Florida. You know, it does happen here, mm-hmm. and it happens quickly. There's always a backup plan. Yep, there always is. Yep, there's lots of options, and so that's what we had to do. We had to change course, and we'd had a, we'd had this on our radar. And we were going to do it. We just bumped we it up bumped a little it bit. We bumped it up because so. it was indoors, and, and it was there. Yep. So. Um, so anyway, so it was very easy access going in. It's just open, drop the rope, and back you go into the skeletal world. It's self-guided tour. Mm-hmm. Though the little man did come back in a couple times. and He did. Now, I'm not sure how I felt about the little man. By little man, she's referring to the guy that was at the counter who we bought the tickets from. Who and- enjoyed his work. And he was knowledgeable. Yes. I, yes, I think that he did, except for when he gave us the introductory spiel. It kind of felt like he was just, just, all right, guys, let me get through this. There was a guy and his dad, and they were in the woods, and they found a dog skull. It was basically da, 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 da. him saying, okay, this isn't creepy because someone did this as a scientific right. purpose, and it's not just like some dude who collects bones. It's not Jeffrey Except Dahmer. it is somebody who just collects yeah, bones. Yeah, it is just... <laughs> <laughs> But he's turned his passion into a money-making <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. He's got two museums now that are apparently doing so well. I mean, so this well. is like the kid that digs the holes next door to me. He could turn that into something. He should be a grave digger. I mean, you know, there's <laughs> always go with what your passion is. So anyway, we walked in. He gave us the little spiel about why this all happened and why we're here. And then he set us free. And it was I thought the place had good flow, the way we walked through. And it started off with, I would say, the less impressive skeletons, right? Yeah, I agree. The more it simple. It was a buildup. The more simple ones. Right. They, they didn't yeah. wow us right then with, oh, my yeah, You didn't gosh. walk into the elephant skeleton right, right off. Right, or the dinosaur, which wasn't there. But No, you <laughs> actually started with a, a bunch of human skeletons, yeah. actually. Which kind of... I don't know how I felt about that. Like like this one. (laughs) Doing yoga. You didn't just walk into human skeletons. You walked into human skeletons doing yoga. Articulating something, yes. (laughs) Doing the downward dog or whatever that is. Yes, I'm not sure which pose that is in particular. I know the sign designated which one it was. The windmill or something. This group that does these museums, uh, they're very creative with how they choose to pose the skeletons. I guess they try to make it as entertaining as possible. It's interesting. I mean, just that... That caught your eye more than just a skeleton, a skeleton standing there on a rod like in biology class, yeah, right? Yeah, right. I mean, I thought it was interesting. So there were some other, they had some human skulls. 
of various um, ages, ages and sizes and sexes, and it was interesting. Little the baby, little baby skull, kind of bothered me. Yeah, that, that? I didn't take a picture of that just because I couldn't. One was it was even a, a like at thirty weeks, so that was kind of bizarre. And you know what else kind of bothered me that when I got home was the little crooked person. With the hunchback? Yeah. The lady with um I Did you get a picture some of that one? version of osteoporosis? Uh, yeah. He's looking for it. Something about that one kind of I don't know. Sat wrong with you. It did. I'm sure the person got there by way of mm, no, I don't donating think I their body, here. right? For medical yeah. purposes. For medical purposes. It was it was more than likely an elderly person who's all, you know. It looked like my grandmother, sort of having the skin and the hairdo. It was grandma, which was kind of bizarre. I think it had a walking cane. Or it could have been, you know, the witch in Snow White. We don't know. Oh, oh, here we go. You got her? Yeah, she had a walking cane. There she is. The ghostly shadow of a fat woman behind her. Oh, that's me. (laughs) I was going to say, did you notice in that picture, the both of us, instead of faces, we have skulls? I'm not joking. Wait, pull that back up again. We yes. both have skulls for faces. Okay. Yes. Just reflections. Transformed okay. into. So there was all kinds of human things to look at. Um, and then it went right into domestic animals, right? Did it go from there to domestic? I think it was more wild animals, but Monkeys. not like common wild animals. You know what? what struck me through the entire thing was how they had the tiniest little pieces of the tiniest little bones right the little the for the little mice and you could see each little rib cage yes. which it almost almost seemed like that that had to have been cartilage of some sort it couldn't have actually been a bone they're just a little teeny, bone or the little tiny, tiny monkey fingers and the mm-hmm. little monkey whatever i mean mm-hmm. it would just it just freaked me out and the little moles the little moles like the- there was Fingers. every, and then they had, um, we're just all over the place here. I don't know. What was it, the little monkey? That's one of them. Yeah. I mean, they, the way they had them on branches, like they were alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is how they would look Without their if skin. they were here, right, just sitting there. I thought it was fascinating. And the um, domestic dogs, mm-hmm. the way they had different skulls for different breeds. Now, a cat's a cat's a cat. Right. Just different sizes. They didn't have much to go with there. Yeah, they just those had, are some of the cats there. Right. There's Klaus sitting there. They had, um, you know, wild cats, domestic cats, all cat species. Lions, tigers, cheetahs. Right. Leopards. Yeah. They were all Pretty there. Pretty much anything you can think of. For a cat. And they were all basically the they same. Whether it the was same, a house cat different sizes. to the lion. It was yeah. the exact same skeletal frame the thing that i thought was really cool about all of that was um, the skeletons for a lot of these are animals i've seen before Mm. you know we all go to animal kingdom and whatever else um but you don't get up that close to the animals so to be there in this exhibit you're not that far away from these skeletons and you get a really good idea of the size of some of these animals and that had never quite hit me before because i've only ever been near them at a you know a A safe distance yeah right exactly so yeah you're right if you use your imagination you can picture yourself like here's here you are by the elephant oh, skull. That too. Yeah, that's yeah, an elephant just skull. Just the elephant skull was like half the size of my body. Uh, yeah, so, easily, if not bigger. Yeah, it was it, it was fascinating for me in that regard. The whole thing was fascinating. Going back to the dogs, okay, they had so many different breeds, and it just threw me. I mean, you think the dog's a dog, but yeah, it's not. Because domestic cats... Um, when they had that, they just had two skeletons. They had the domestic cat, and then they had the munchkin cat. Right. Um, and and honestly, under under the uh, skin and under the fur, cats are pretty much domestic yeah. cats are pretty much the same. Unless you go into like a Persian, where the skull might be slightly slightly R- different. Right. Right. But that's or, a mutation. Or like grumpy cat. Right. You know? Grumpy. Yeah. Right. His little jowls, I'm sure, were hanging yeah. lower than everyone else's. <laughs> but dogs, the breeds and the sizes, they had. Pretty much every popular dog breed you yes, can think of. They were there. And in a way, it was interesting, but again, in a way, slightly disturbing. Slightly disturbing, yeah. But, I felt that way too. But honestly, for me, fascinating. 
honestly fascinating to see the difference, especially not just with the dogs, but with the cats. When I saw the cats, when it went from lion to tiger, all the way down to munchkin domestic cat. Yeah. Honestly, with the cats, their skull features were exactly the same. It was the same. Just miniaturized. It was the same. And then in their in their skeletal and their arms and their legs, it's it's amazing to see how that got to that. Right. You know, how did something like a tiger get to over right. thousands of years of human, you know, breeding and stuff right. like that? How did they get to a hu- There were slight cat? differences with the faster cats, like the cheetahs, their mm-hmm. hindquarters and their yeah. legs might have been a little bit longer and all. But when you get down to the basic skull, the the paws and the claws and the tails, it's the same. Mm-hmm. And it makes me even more want to go out somewhere and grab me a big squishy lion or tiger and wow. touch it. <laughs> I, mean, oh, it just... I thought you were going to talk about makes me want to go and get a shovel and start digging up bones or something. I thought that's oh, where Lord, you were no, going. No, no, I don't care. <laughs> it's like, wow. I didn't I'm going to dig up my, every cat I've ever had. Bring it to that. No, that ain't going to happen. They're in the garage, They're right? They're in the garage. They're still in the freezer. We haven't buried them. So... Um, <laughs> Let's talk about, um, okay, so we went on from the monkeys. There were oh, elephant oh. skulls. They had the huge animals. They had giraffes, elephants, uh, rhinos, hippos. The hippo was pretty fascinating the to giraffe, me. giraffe, look at it. He was and huge. He was, he was so huge. tall. And it was just right there. But I think the, the one that we were most surprised by was how gigantic an elephant was yes. when we stood next to it. I think I came up to its kneecap. That yep. was that's at least fifteen feet tall. Yeah. I mean um, look at his ribs. It was and his tusks. I and wish yeah. you can't quite get a sense of how large it is in the picture you again. Can't. But it's and if monstrous. you look I don't know if you read National Geographic. No. Nope. Um this month's National Geographic is about ivory and it came in the mail. The day after we went to this. Oh, okay, interesting. Oh, good lord! I sat there and cried my eyes out Aww. over they. You know, there's there's pretty graphic pictures sometimes in National Geographic yeah. graphic for me anyway, and it was talking about illegal ivory and all of that. Both with elephants and rhinoceroses, that's become a huge problem in the it's world, horrible. and it's it's bringing them to extinction in some cases with the rhinoceroses. And also, I promised I'd put a photo of the rhinoceros up for yeah, rhino, the rhino who wanted to. There's Have the it. rhino. That one looks like a nice one, though. Did you get a picture of the hippo? Because the massive size of the hippo's mouth was huge. It was so big. It's kind of hard scary. to tell what's going on here in the photo, but that's uh, a front on. That's a right? front yeah. on. Yeah, look at his teeth. The his... teeth were massively huge, and I love hippopotamuses so much because they're so cute. But if but they're, I, they're very violent, they yeah, are. I think if I were at you know, that end of the mouth where it was open like that, I would be freaking out. They because. are consistently rated the most dangerous animal on the planet because they cause the most human deaths yeah. in the world. Yeah, after I think looking people at don't those think teeth, it's going to get you in it. No, because it's so cute. It just looks like, oh, look at the little baby. And the big fat hippo. Yeah, and they, the mothers, they stay with their mothers forever. I saw a thing on TV one time where uh, that little baby rhino, the mother was blind, and people had to raise it for eight years. Oh. To, yeah. A blind hippopotamus? No, his the blind hippo's baby, because the blind mama couldn't take care of oh, it. Oh, oh. Anyway. Now that would be very... Way off. Wow. Okay. Um, that one got of, dramatic. One of, the other things, <laughs> one of the other things I was surprised by, and this was between, like, the cats and the dogs and the, the large, like, African game animals... Um, that I was surprised by, they had the seals and the walruses. And w- I told Teresa, I think it was like, I didn't know they had bones under there. Right? Because you just, you just imagine them that they're just so like squishy and like a big blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and just a big ball of blubber. But, yeah. um, but the, there's, there is a skeletal system under yeah. there. The thing that got me was the, um, I guess, yeah, it was the seal. Looks the skele- skeleton of a seal looks like a what I would consider a mermaid seal. So yeah, I that one laying there, it doesn't yeah. look like a mermaid. If you're watching the show, there's one in the bottom left corner just laying down. You get it, what looks like a human rib cage with a spine and then fins coming out of yeah. it. It looks it's like what you would think about a mermaid skeleton looking like. And I'm thinking maybe that's where all of these tales about mermaids from sailors on the ocean maybe they were just seeing seals. Seal in skeletons pretty little washing up. Clamshell bras and long hair. <clears throat> I, don't know, I don't know any seals that wear clamshells, but you know, 
<laughs> maybe there's I don't want to make a blanket statement. <laughs> I don't I it was just every corner we ran around and this was kind of in a circular fashion. Yeah. It kind of led you one way and then you turn around to another display and it kind of just it was like a cul-de-sac in mm-hmm. a neighborhood. You just kind of wound your way through these Yes. exhibits and they had some really um it, it was it was cool how they they did it down like you were talking about the detail of it to the point that some of them had their eye sockets like the cartilage that would be around their eye it was like a little circle of cartilage uh, it was yeah and Hold, it, like, a little, little eye bit creepy be, yeah. can we talk about the birds because i didn't like that the birds were a little creepy no why didn't y'all like the birds okay that's a cute flamingo but the rest of them looked so predatorial and Terrifying. You also realize how big birds' heads are. Yeah. Yep. Well, their this. body's so frail. I, I wish I had a better picture of this. They got this tiny little body, this tiny little neck, and this giant head you with didn't this get an giant owl. Beak. Those owls had some big old skulls. Those big birds, and when they're like, ah, well, they even ah, had with a their hummingbird. Beak. They had a hummingbird. Okay, that was teeny, teeny, tiny. And you know, bit. okay, birds have to be fairly light for, excuse me, for flight. They, that they had every freaking little piece. Mm-hmm. It just threw me. It was like, oh, my gosh. And I'll tell you one that... Oh, um, there's the hummingbird. I'm sorry. There he yeah, is. Yeah, look. Check mm-hmm. that out. That teeny, is, tiny. And that was like the size of a hummingbird. Well, so, because it was a hummingbird. <laughs> I know. Can you believe how... It was like, wow. Tiny. An well, actual tiny. hummingbird that was the size of one. Unbelievable. Shut up, JL. <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> But, okay, what else? They had a Florida section, right? They did. They had a completely Florida-themed, uh, that you was know, cool. the wildlife of Florida. Yeah, I, I The manatee, so. the ribs on the manatee, if you want to call them ribs, freaked me out. Oh, why? Because they were so huge. But the, It was like a big, flat, baby back rib only. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a Fred Flintstone. I'm going to eat this kind of a rare. <laughs> and it was huge. It just, it, I didn't, I've never seen a manatee in person. Well, what was your response to the big orca whale that was over us that the entire was time? That was one. It's a pretty large the whole animal, thing. right? And you know what? Let me see if I can find him. It, there he the is. whole experience to me, that's just the front end, right? That's yeah, the front. Yeah, that was the front. And the whole body was over the whole front of the exhibit mm-hmm. over our heads. Yeah, it, it was the span it, of the middle of the, the whole room. The whole experience to me, I, I always want to know more about it. So I always go home or I'm always Googling to find out, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm always doing that. And it's always since way back when I'm thumbing through the encyclopedia. Now I'm thumbing through the internet looking to find more about what? Oh, sorry. I'm just thinking back to when we did our episode about our um, trip to Richmond, Virginia, and we were staying in the room, and you could not sleep until you got to the bottom of what happened in, what was it called? Shock, tr- shock tea? Shock, she shock said, ho bottom. Shock, shock ho bottom. bottom. <laughs> we're in the hotel room, guys, and she says to me, there will be no sleeping tonight <laughs> until I find out. I can't. What I can't. happened in shock ho bottom? I cannot. It, it's... It's just, I've always been that way. So I went home after that, once the power came back on, <laughs> and I got my <laughs> internet back. And I was all about trying to find the animals that I had never thought about before. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, and I wanted to know how much the skeletons weighed. And it just, it was fascinating. Okay, now, let's talk about. Are we going to talk about the last We're going to talk it? about how they got so clean. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about the last exhibit. There's some creations in there, right? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking, but yeah. should we talk about that after the cleaning? Sure, whatever. <laughs> okay, the uh, cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> the cleaning of the skeletal remains. Please do tell us, Teresa, how do they clean these skeletons? Okay, this is where it's going to get graphic. So we're sitting there, but they, we came up to this little screen push this button. Well, first Dustin thought it was touch screen. It wasn't. So <laughs> once we get past that and he's like tapping on the screen, nothing's happening. This isn't it, but it looks like that. <laughs> okay. So what is that? That's, That's Dustin mesmerized by the video about cleaning oh, the skeleton. Okay. So, all right. So they showed There's the us front the- view of Dustin mesmerized <laughs> by the video of how That's they clean just, the skeleton. Is that how you sit in class? Yes. <laughs> Lord. All right. Anyway. It's Talk no about wonder it. he never got a ribbon. Okay. <laughs> so it 
what they showed us, they brought in a dead animal, a body. This and is in the video, not in real life. No. Oh, God, no, no. I would have been screaming my head off in real life. No, in the video. And it was a laboratory, whatever. It looked like, you know, CSI kind of crap. Okay, so they bring in, and it's a lion. A freshly Dead. deceased lion. They lay him on the table, and they start carving his flesh off his body. And like a butcher. It, like a butcher. And it got a little graphic. I had to look away at one point. I didn't watch it. I you didn't watch know. it? It was it was too traumatic. And I don't know if it for me if it was because it was a cat or if it was just too traumatic. It was a little too much Jeffrey Dahmer for me. So they're <laughs> carving the flesh off and they get it down as clean as they can. And then I'm assuming I didn't watch it enough to know I'm gonna I'm gonna assume they dismantle it. Yeah, I think so. Label they- it. And then let the bugs take over. These little beetles. Okay, this is the first time we're introducing the concept of this. They have flesh eating, flesh eating beetles that Nature's clean little cleaners. the carcasses for them. Ew. Can you get those for children's bedrooms? <laughs> Did they clean the bedroom? <laughs> I don't know. I need little They might clean the beetles. flesh off of your child. <laughs> okay, well, so the, the carcass has to be old. It can't be new flesh. It's got to be... Decaying flesh. Decaying flesh. And, um, yeah, why am I the one describing this? Because this, this just Look, here, freaked me out. This Tell us, is, Dustin. You know, the, the whole museum and the whole exhibit is very, you know, the exhibition is very interesting in terms of the skeletons of the different animals that you see. Where I feel like they may have gone a little too far is showing you how they got to that point. And I think that might be interesting for some people, um, but the fact that they do they do have to butcher the animal, and which is already dead, right? Not by their hands, and they have to clean the bones with flesh eating beetles. Right. The fact that they had to put a trash can next to the do television. Do you really believe that was there for that reason? There was not another trash can in that entire There was exhibit. no other seats there either. So it could have been a seat just to sit down and No, there was a, a seat mint. where I was sitting at the other video. Oh, that's right. Was there a trash can there? No, there was no trash can at that one. Did we look yes. in the trash can? I, I, uh, no, it did not open the trash can. There were no weird aromas coming from the okay. trash can area either. But so what they're explaining was there's this little seating area, as you saw in the picture where Dustin was, where you could sit and watch this movie. And then off to the side were two little holes, you know, where you could look through the glass, and inside you would see rows of skulls. In various sh- in forms of stages decay. Stages of decay. And these beetles. Real, real, right there. Mo- moving throughout, you know, you, you think of like an Indiana Jones movie where you see like skulls and then like the cockroaches come crawling out of the eye socket. That's what was happening. Um, I have a picture. I'm not going to show it right now. Okay, that's Um, fine. Um, But yeah, and then there was a little trash can off to the side. I think (laughs) everyone had a a moment where we're all like, like you kind of had to get yourself. I mean, I think that Dustin's gag reflex actually kicked in for a Mm -hmm. second. And um, but you kind of got past it after a few seconds. The beetle in the the. The beetles eating the dead animal did not bother me. Not that, nearly as much as the when the film started and they carried in the body of a deceased animal. Okay, I have to say, I did not watch the video, so I can't compare it. I agree with you. That's carving what, away. That's what got me at his little paws. Off comes the. Off comes oh, the. Okay. Here's the, the de- fur. Here's <laughs> the now deal. we're down to the muscle. This, this would be why I if, didn't if, watch it. If you're doing this, that video is completely optional. You have to push a button to play it, and there are warning signs. That it or, could be graphic. That it could be graphic. Yeah. So it's, oh, it was. It doesn't make. I don't feel like it makes or breaks this experience. No. But it is there, and you should be aware that it's. I there. would not show that video to little no, children. No, no, not at all. No way, shape, or form <laughs> should a child see them peeling and cutting away at the flesh of an animal. And when we talk about the beetles eating the flesh off the skeletons, I feel like, I don't know if it was emphasized enough, but 
they take away whatever they can from the bones first before they give it the remnants and then they age to the it, beetles. Or they have to age it in some way. The, or it has to be old. The beetles eat what is remaining, what hasn't been able to be cleaned off. So you're not going to be looking at beetles, you know, with flesh peeling off of, you know, the, the bones. <laughs> There's nothing flesh color. It's all... It's just it watching just a lot like, of bugs crawl in and out of the skull. I'll tell you like what it bones. looks like. It looks like a chicken bone on the dorm room floor that didn't get picked up after the party. You know, just like an old piece of chicken bone. Only there were skulls. I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, and bugs all over. That didn't, and the bugs didn't bother me because they were contained behind the glass. It took me a second. I got I got over it. Like, but the when I first, I was like, oh. I mean, I don't know. And they, and then they gave us, they told us it takes, you know, sometimes a couple months for the beetles to do their work, right? Wasn't it like a couple months? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It varied depending on the severity of and how how much work they needed to do. Right. And what they were being paid per hour, I'm sure, put in how quickly they were working. <laughs> they get a fair wage. <laughs> so, I don't know. Like I said, I, I think the beetle thing, I would show to pretty much any child, unless you know your own child and you know they can't handle it. Like if they but specifically that video, don't do well with bugs. There's not a child on this planet that needs to see that video. Yeah, no. And by child, I mean younger than a teen, I would say. Yeah. Unless you've got the most macabre. <laughs> You know, someone strong, who embraces the darkness, right? <laughs> you know, I don't even think Stella could sit through that. I think it would. Uh, being a vegetarian, no. Oh no, it, she wouldn't I think be able would, to do that. It would, yeah, it would bother her. Yeah, because it bothered me, and I don't know why I watched I, it. I, I could, watched it because I can take those, but no, okay, yeah, I couldn't even it watch freaked it. freaked me out. So yeah. Well, after that, after we watched the flesh-eating beetles, we come to the last exhibit in the um, in the place, which was to use uh, to say it nicely was creative um i i was hopeful I that it was real but it wasn't i didn't i actually didn't like this part of the exhibit really? yes okay so you guys know how you felt about the titanic exhibit being tainted, disres- tainted and disrespectful in some ways to the lives you know of the people that were on the boat i felt like this part of it was disrespectful to the lives because they built as well. it out of other, they yes. merged things together. What we are talking about is they created an exhibit of mythical animals, um, and they did that by combining the body, the the skeletons of different species. One, they tried to make a centaur. So you saw a uh, a male is. fused together with what it looks like is a deer. Or a zebra or, or whatever. Yeah. Some kind and, of horsey animal. And I under, sort of antelope thing. I understand what you're saying. You're saying, what if you, what if that was your skeleton? Would exactly. You, would you want your remains being presented in that way? No, Maybe someone yeah. did, though. Did this man who must have donated his body for medical scientific purposes intend for his skeleton to be made into a centaur? I'm thinking He not. might have put that in his will. Maybe he did, but I'm not aware of that. I don't know. I just felt like it was a bit disrespectful to the lives of the creatures that they did it. I mean, it was again, kind of bizarre. I'm not going to pick it the exhibit, but that part, <laughs> while I found it fascinating, Take down the centaur. Take down. <laughs> while I found it fascinating, there was a part of me that was just kind of like, I don't know that I'm okay with this. Yeah, it was a little. I know it was meant to be humorous and entertaining. Entertaining. And- and I understand that. Oh, I forgot one other part of it that what? I also was kind of like, I'm not sure how I feel about this. They had a part in the exhibit where it talked about uh, where it showed the skeletons of people as well as animals that were born with deformities. Oh, I forgot about that. The two headed goat. It thing was kind of like that. the freak show of the exhibit. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the two headed goat or the skull, that was a the little sky, that cyclops was a little, calf and. Um, freak show it was and classic I'm not, i don't you know i mean i just don't know what i think about that what were some of the other things in their destiny one remember? of them was a turtle skeleton who had been caught in a um that was just sad a uh, i had a, seen that before like a soda can ring thing and he had to grow up with the soda can ring around him yeah well i feel like that one drives home a message right exactly yeah. Versus the other ones, which seem more for spectacle. Yeah, yeah, you know, nature's we, freak show. Yeah, I, I, it feels like the circus. You know, it was a little circus sideshow. Yeah, 
I, I'm starting to appreciate the fact that I gave a disclaimer before the show because, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, this, you know, none of this stuff is overly graphic, but it's, it's, most of it is real. And this really happened to these it animals and humans. These and, humans that, uh, yeah. Yeah. And we saw, oh, uh, you know, we didn't even talk about the turtles. There were giant turtles in oh, their yeah. shells. That was interesting. But once again, I, it harkened me back to the day on the beach six months ago when there was a dead turtle on the beach. Mm-hmm. And at that point, it needed some beetles to assist it in <laughs> its cleaning. <laughs> There's uh, one of the tortoises there. I think that was the Galapagos turtle, maybe. Yeah. The, one of the larger ones. There were ones. gators. There were fish. There's a lot we didn't talk about. There was just about any type of species in some form. Yeah. Whether it be mm-hmm. a flying or a swimming or Yeah. Fish, birds, mammals, mammals reptiles, everything. Right. They it were was all, all there. All represented. If it has bones, it's there. Yeah. And so I I mean now, it's weird because it's creepy and again macabre in a way, but at the same time fascinating and educational and I don't know. I the whole time that we were there I just kind of was a bit unsure. Okay, about well after what you I left thought. Dustin. Uh huh. Um, JL and I perused the gift shop, and there was something in the gift shop that I was totally against being there. And you know what? This could have been the issue <laughs> for earlier today. Yeah. They were selling real human bones. Little, ha- little digits of fingers. Now, the gift shop is a good gift shop, actually. They had a wide variety of merchandise. Some of the things were really cool they had the branded merchandise with the T-shirts and stuff, obviously, of the exhibit. Well, were, yeah, Some most of them of it was were 4D models for kids to learn about right? skeletons and how stuffed the anatomy. Stuffed animals of the animals. Yeah, yeah stuffed animals. Um, there was jewelry. They even sold coffee. And it was just, yeah, a little uh, w- hodgepodge of... Yeah, things to decorate your home with. Classic, you know. yeah. Rocks, lots of fossils, stuff like that. Then they had some, like dead animals in frames, you that know, the, kind of odd. the bats, you know, pinned, pinned up, up like butterflies, like butterflies and you could hang them in your house and they had skulls you could, um, you could get, oh, and they had, the they had also, what is this? We keep running into people who sell alligator heads and claws. It's a thing. We're in Florida. Alligator that heads are thing. everywhere. And they're it usually baby thing. alligators. Yeah. That is, I just... It wasn't even a skull. It's just, boom, there's the alligator head again. It's a thing. It's taxidermy. You know. uh, just the head. Just a decapitated. Spoiler alert, you're getting one for Christmas. <laughs> 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 but anyway, then there, that was all, you know, it, it was what it was. But then, yes. Then we go over to the counter off to the side, and they had these little plastic containers full of human bones. One was human bones, and then the other one was a box of raccoon penile bones. What? Yeah. <laughs> a whole bunch of them. Uh, what? <laughs> Three bucks, baby. You can have one of your very own or whatever they Spoiler were. Spoiler alert. That's what you're getting for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I had an issue when they were selling the real bones, and I asked her. I said, can you do, can you do this? I just, that's what I was wondering. Are you allowed to sell and human bones? And she said bones? something about... I don't remember the year. It was one that 19... I want to say... I'm going to just say 1961. It's probably a different year. She said if it, the person died before 1961... It's an antique. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's an antique bone. And it, you're allowed to sell them or huh? something. You can't sell the whole complete skeleton, but she had like... They, they were, were rib like, sections of ribs. And they were like fingers. Finger digits. And they were just in these little things on the counter where you can... You know, you're there on your field trip with, and you come home with a, a digit off somebody's hand, for three bucks a piece. I just, I can't. And they had like segments of spine my or something. Mind just, I that, can't. I was, why would you do that? No, I, I don't get that. Give me a replica. Why would you buy someone's finger? <laughs> there, no good can come from this. No. <laughs> the per, the child or person that takes that home. It's just gonna be haunted. Right, it's one. It's gonna it's gonna mess up their life for the rest of their life, and two, they they're already messed up because why are they buying this little? Right, you know, I could see the the little ink pen shaped like a bone. It's okay. It's not yes, real. the 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 paraphernalia, the bone paraphernalia. That's right. fun. They had the you know the knee high socks that looked like they you when you put them on like, it looked like, like, like an X ray. Right, that's okay. all cute. That's but you cute. take home 
But you're going to take your... A segment of somebody's real rib. You're going to go home and grind that up, and you're going to do something funky with it. Right? That's what people are... uh, That's the way I see it going. This is getting Fargo or something. Yeah, no, that's like (laughs) Eastern medicine type stuff. Yes, right? That's what I'm saying. It would be like... Yeah. I can't, uh, yeah. No, I was uncomfortable with that. So instead, we walked away from that counter to the happier day of the dead table. <laughs> yes. Which, honestly, I don't know why it was in there. Just because it's bones. Day of the dead in Mexico, they all celebrate with skeletons. So there was a lot of um, stuff that had been imported from Mexico where you will see the happy skeletons dancing around and playing and instruments. And their brightly colored outfits. There was one in the middle of a gynecological appointment. <laughs> okay, there's this place. In, I'm not there's this place Again, in, I'm glad I put the disclaimer out there. <laughs> there was this place in Cozumel, if you ever are cruising or in Cozumel, that sells all of these things, and it is the exact same company because it's the exact same items. And yes, I did buy some Day of the Dead earrings for Halloween. They were super cute, little skeletal people. Um, Ten bucks, you know. Then they had the weird little tchotchke. I'm on a field trip. You know, get your mood rings and stuff like yeah. that, which I got one of those too. Because um, kids want to spend a quarter. That's you know? right. <laughs> well, it's three bucks now, uh-huh. but you know that's all you got. So they know the people that own this. They they know what the gift shop should be in a gift shop. There's set price in there for everybody. Mm-hmm. Everything from hundreds of dollars to two bucks or. You know what is interesting, and I don't know if it's because they couldn't fit it in the back or what, but in the gift shop is the largest bone in the entire exhibit, the skull of a gray uh, humpback whale, I think it is. it's huge. It is floor to ceiling. That's the one that was like stuck on that wall back there, mounted on the wall. Yeah, it was massively, massively huge. But I think it might be there to lure you into this. I was just going to say that. I think that's there to pull the people in, and from there then you go, huh, do we want to spend $20 to walk through this Well, yes, we do. And we sure did. What was your overall opinion? Okay. It's not someplace I'm going to go back to. Unless I go back to the gift shop for a human bone or a you know, trinket of some kind. I don't buy human bones. Let me just say that. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Don't weird. write. I'm don't, joking. Don't, I don't send her email. I will not buy human <laughs> bones. But I don't have to go through the exhibit again. I went home and talked to my family about it. And all of them would like to see this. But we're that kind of people, I guess. I don't know. So I would, I think it's educational. I think mm-hmm. it's worth it if you got the time. Like I said, like we said, we were there for another reason. We got rained out, and this was a good backup plan. It's a yeah. good little, ooh, look what I did on my vacation. This is cool. And you can only see this in two places in the world, Oklahoma or Orlando. Right. So, you know, if you're in either. Yeah. Take advantage of it. Take it in. What about you, Justin? Well, I come from the standpoint of um, it's educational, like you said. I actually went in there when we when we went in there. I said, "God, I hope this is a self guided tour because we've you said that several times because we've done enough of these guided tours where someone pops up and has a weird accent and then the accent goes away right, and all that." Right, right. I actually think this would have benefited from some sort of guided tour versus uh, self guided tour because there was so much to look at in there that you simply couldn't take it all in if you spent less than an hour in there. Now, if you spent three hours in there, which you're welcome to do during their operating hours, I think you could really start to get an understanding of everything that's in there. But I think I wanted somebody to tell me what to think right. about this stuff. And give you statistics. I wanted right. statistics about things. Like, yeah. this is the such and such and such and... You know, its bones are hollow or versus these bones are more dense or, you know, I kind of wanted, yeah. I wanted that information. So yeah. I, I come out of it with a positive vibe thinking this is very educational and very cool. And I, and if you're inclined to like this kind of thing, you're going to like this kind of thing, but I would recommend it through whatever kind of tours they give. Or if you have a school group or some sort of educational group that has uh, that information go with them instead of doing the self-guided. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Um, I, I, like I said, I had mixed feelings about this exhibit. When it was all said and done, I was kind of like, meh. But I think that a lot of that had to do with the fact that we weren't on a guided tour. I always get a lot from the guides, you know, explaining yeah. things, telling the stories behind it. 
Um, well, I like the, interaction, interaction. Yeah, the interaction, the interaction is big for me. So, you know, for us to walk through and I'm looking at skeletons and they're, you know, interesting, fascinating, gross, whatever, but it's still like, it all just becomes, it's just all one big skeleton for me at the end. I really could have <laughs> used, uh, used the guide as far as my kids. I think that I would probably never take them to this unless I went to their website and downloaded some of those teacher guides so that I could You'd act have to have some facts, so that yeah. I could act as the guide for them so they could actually get something from this educational rather than because otherwise I think that I would go in there I would spend the money on it and they would blow through it in 15 20 oh, minutes Oh yeah and be because done. they'd be like there's a skeleton there's a skeleton Oh look at that one look at that one yeah a skeleton okay when's lunch Yeah you know so um yeah. I think I would have to be... Show them that video, then they won't want lunch. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I wouldn't want to just go in there willy-nilly with my kids like we did. Right. I would want this to be something that I was a little bit more prepared because since they don't supply the um, instruction outright, I would, want to, I would want to do that myself. You know what might benefit? You know how... Where is it where you, you're like in a self-guided preserve or something with animals where they give you a hard map outlining everything and it gives you a little bit of information about all the animals you know, like where you walk through what you're supposed to be looking for like a bird spotting guide right or something. right right i think that bless you Sorry. i think that would have been helpful too or even an earpiece like an audio guide right. throughout would would have been very nice yeah. Yeah. yeah something to just kind of help certain things within the exhibits stand out there's yeah. over 400 skeletons so it's really kind of tricky to have things um well you're just like bouncing from one thing to another exactly. oh look at this oh look at that you know and if you're in a group you're always someone's always pulling you to look at something else and mm -hmm. you might not be done looking and then you you, you but know, you've already moved back on or you've or... moved on or and also i would say no no your child if you're taking your family some children would be bored to death by this yeah and others would embrace it and you know i think the one good thing that about this exhibit is they had no qualms at all with you taking pictures or video in yeah. fact it was encouraged for you to do so yeah um so i appreciated that at least about um about this attraction that's good so yeah i think i think we covered it all did anybody else have anything they wanted to add to it no no i think that covers it I, all i think um if you're interested in it, go check it out while you're here in Orlando. Yep, yeah, it's just right, right next there to the next eye. to the eye. So it's easy to pop in and pop out, you know, according to whatever amount of time that you Nothing have. Nothing else. Check out the gift shop. <laughs> yeah. Just for the... Just please don't buy those human bones. Just don't bones. buy the human bones. <laughs> we feel like you should boycott that. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week's show. We'll hope to see you next week for some more fun. We're taking you to the Botanical Garden of Bach Tower in Lake Wales, Florida. So you're going to want to be back for that. Sounds good. Cool. With that, trip out. Oh.